from talking to founders at Airminers, seeing applications come in for the launch pad and meeting companies through the Apollo projects, I've gotten to see a lot of different people trying to start companies. Uh, and I want to talk about what it means to be a solo founder and some, some tips and some ideas for how to start a company by yourself. But first some context. So like I don't have some sort of like magical answer for how to find a co-founder or how to start a company. If I did, maybe I would be making a different video, right? And, and the, the reality is like, I'm not sure anybody really has it all figured out, but just to point out that like, I, I definitely don't. So what follows are some thoughts or some things that I've seen, uh, seeing people apply to Launchpad, seeing applications to, to Apollo Project, meeting different founders. And ultimately, if you see this video and you're like, oh my God, these like this is so bad. What you really need to do to find a co-founder, what you really need to do to start a company is X. Then what I need you to do is to whatever, pause the video or and like type up what X is and then send that to me. Cause that's, that's the point. That's what I'm trying to, to solve for here. Why I'm talking about this is that we need to figure out how to pull gigatons of carbon dioxide from the atmosphere every year starting pretty dang soon and that's the why and that why has has led me to figuring out how do we help accelerate a thousand shots on goal and i see a ton of passionate driven persistent people who are working by themselves and they need to get either a co-founder either get a company started or something like that so ultimately that's why i'm making this video so I'm saying this is for solo founders, but a lot of this stuff applies to a team. If you got, you know, two co-founders and you're trying to find a third or you're trying to get your first hire together. So I'm just using solo founders as a way to start. And I think where that, where that pain is most painful and most important, but this perspective can apply to any early stage, small team. Starting a company by yourself is really hard. I've seen this a lot where it seems like what, what, the mental model I have for starting a company is that it almost takes like two human brains fused together to start a company and maybe, maybe more, maybe a third and a, and a fourth too. But like, it just, it seems like there's kind of this initial energy, this initial boost that you just, you actually, it's really difficult to get it from one brain. And even if you have like a bunch of advisor kind of people that are big fans or people that are like, even just asking you hard questions. I think it's really hard to get that, that kind of ping pong back and forth between like your brain and your, your advisor or somebody who's really rooting for you. I think it really comes down to like having somebody who you kind of do a, a brain meld with and that you're able to cover, you know, a ton of ground and cover a lot of different stuff. Okay. So great. So every, every great pitch deck has, here's the problem and here's the solution. So, so what's my solution? I don't have a solution. Like I said in the, in the beginning, this is a really tough thing and we're gonna work to figure out how to do it as best as we can. So again, I welcome, welcome tips. So here's what I've seen. One, getting out and meeting other people. I think about the uh, post by Brian Armstrong uh, from, from Y Combinator. Uh, he, started, he started Coinbase and he got into Y Combinator by posting on, on Hacker News hey, I've spent a year trying to meet people and have co coffee conversations with people and I still haven't found somebody that I can really connect with. This is kind of my Hail Mary. I think we can get into Y Combinator, but I can't do it by myself. And here's, here's what I'm looking for. So if you, if you are at that point, if you've done that year of work, then I think you're at the point where maybe you can do a, do a Hail Mary and say like, hey, I, I, here's what I'm looking for. But what's hidden behind that post is, holy crap, this guy spent a year of coffee meetings, of meeting people, of trying to, you know, really figure this out, of finding a co-founder. That all speaks to this being super hard. It's not going to be as simple, likely, as putting up a post on Hacker News. Because for, for Brian Armstrong, it was he was a year in, right? That's what that's what the output of that year looked like. You can't just kind of leapfrog and, and do that. I don't I don't think that that works. But so it really so it really comes down to networking. So it really comes down to meeting other people, having conversations, asking them, what do you like about this? What's the biggest concern you have with this? One person who's gone down this path uh, in the carbon removal world recently uh, is James McWalter. And he shared his, his journey and his plan and his spreadsheet uh, as part of a business model lab session. And you can check out the recording of that 
We also have Friday afternoon networking events at Air Miners. Uh, we don't really structure these at this point. It's kind of a, you know, a way to randomly bump into people. So there's probably a better way to, to navigate the, the network. We have a members list of everything that if you're, you know, if, you're, if there is somebody that you're looking for or some type of person, there's an airminers members list that might be helpful. And the last thought I have for somebody starting a company in carbon removal is to check out the business model lab. It's a, it's a channel on airminer Slack uh, that Jeremy Epstein runs. And it's basically a way for early stage founders, teams to present their idea to a, to a bunch of, you know, friendly people who are interested and curious about the idea and to kind of kick it around a bit and, and develop the idea. I believe that's a good way to, to bump into people that you might, uh, might enjoy working with. So what about starting a company with a friend? There's kind of two, two camps if you reduce it to, to kind of yes or no. The camp that's, that's for starting a company with your friend is, is really around, look, there's just so much shared history and background and you can, with friends, you can kind of work stuff out a bit that maybe with somebody you're just meeting, you, you wouldn't be able to do that as, as smoothly. And, and people like Peter Thiel have been advocates for, you know, start a company with somebody that you know. The challenge is uh, when you start a company with somebody that you know, the reason that you're friends is you kind of overlap a lot. And so uh, one of the challenges specifically for starting a carbon removal company is that you need to be able to cover a wide range of, of topics. You need to be able to cover a wide range of, kind of planetary scale thinking about how do we pull gigatons of carbon from the air. And one risk if you're starting a company with a friend is that you you both kind of have the same thinking about something and you, you might be better off and I believe you'd be likely better off with a more diverse team, whether that's whether that's gender diversity, racial diversity, uh, people with different backgrounds, whether it's business and technology, people from different uh, geographies, people who have different relationships to climate change. Maybe some of the best companies to start in this space are going to be somebody who's really all about climate and somebody who's kind of on the fence about it. That could be a pretty fertile territory to create a new company if you're able to balance that out and work that out. So that's my thought on, on starting a company with a friend. I'm not going to say it's it's bad or it's good, but the things that you should be aware of and, and the risks going each way. Diversity is especially important in carbon removal because the climate is affecting every living person on the planet. So everybody has a stake in this. And so everybody has a perspective on it. And if you get the same perspective as somebody else, well, you're missing out on the 7 billion other perspectives, most likely. The last thing is to take a step back and think about what you're what you're really looking for. Ultimately, if you're able to find an advisor, somebody that you like to work with, hey, that's a step in the right direction. Like finding a co-founder, finding your first hire, that might not be your first step. Maybe you're going to find advisors. Maybe you're just going to hear people that that hear out your idea or even just to start or are willing to listen to you. That might be your next step. Your next step doesn't need to be posting on Hacker News like Brian Armstrong, who did it you know, a year into his process. So start wherever you can, whether that's the first conversation, your first presentation, presenting to a bunch of people on Air Miners at Business Model Lab, or something like that. But you don't need to just go from, oh, I'm, I'm working by myself, therefore my next step is a, is a co-founder. Sometimes uh, needing a co-founder can feel a lot like when startups say that they need funding. Well, like, Maybe that's the, you know, the, the thing that, that you need to work out is just if you had the money, then boom, the rocket ship goes off. But in most cases, it's not. It's, it's something about strategy. It's something about team. And that thinking similarly applies to finding a co-founder. If you are saying what you really, really, really just need is a co-founder, it's likely that there's, there's something else that's, uh, that's missing that's earlier than that. Maybe what you need is an advisor to kind of whiteboard the idea with you and, and then say, you know what, this may be the, a better direction. And then you don't talk to them for a month or something. Maybe that's just, you know, you need kind of that a little bit of a course correction from one person. Uh, but it doesn't mean you always need a co-founder right now. You might need advisors, you might need uh, people just to support what you're doing. People that say like, yeah, thumbs up, sounds good. So just continue being aware of, of what is it that you need. Um, and if ultimately you get to the point where you, what you desperately need is a co-founder, then you're going to sound like Brian Armstrong at a point where he makes that post on Hacker News. But again, that wasn't the first, second, third, fourth, fifth. It was the 365th thing that he did to start Coinbase. So wherever you are, just you know, understand where you are in that.
in that process. You really don't know what you don't know. And early on, that can be crucial in the difference between getting something off the ground and not. So if you're starting a company by yourself, these are some of the things that I've seen for you to, for you to think about. If you're in this right now, if you're, if you're wrestling with this and struggling with this, I'd love to hear from you about what resources are working, what's not working, uh, so then I can help bring it to all the companies that are, that are starting out of Air Martyrs Launchpad. Uh, on the other hand, if you've, you've been through this, you've been through it a couple times, and you actually do have some, some deep thoughts about how to do this, I'd also love to hear about that. Maybe we can uh, integrate you in some other way into the Air Martyrs Launchpad. And finally, if you've already found a great team, what happened? What worked? What didn't? Pass on the perspective and the knowledge that you have to other people starting companies in carbon removal so we can all get to gigaton scale carbon dioxide faster.